Hi, welcome to our Homesmith Maslow CNC videos. In this video, we'll be calibrating the Maslow CNC and cutting out the final sled. So what you're gonna want is you're gonna want the Arduino to be hooked up to your computer and be on ground control. And then next, you're gonna want to go to actions. Let me see if I can get there. Right here on the top corner. Then you want to go down to calibrate and click on that. And okay, after you click on that, you're going to want to click begin, select which type you have. We have this one. And then we need to take a measurement um, from the to the motors to the top of the plywood. So let's do that. Okay, now that I have entered my measurement, I'm going to click done and next. Now we need to rotate each sprocket that one tooth faces straight up. Okay, now we need to rotate one the sprockets so that one tooth face is straight up in the 12 o'clock position. So to do that, we are going to use uh, these over here. So let's get to that. Okay, as you can see that it's pointing at 12 o'clock. Um, I did have a problem that when I would click the left motor, motor, the right motor would move and vice versa. So what I did to fix that is I just reversed the, the wires that were going in each motor. So now this one was right here and this one was right here. I just uh, switched those two and it seems to be working fine. So I just wanted to point that out. I don't know if anybody else will have the same problem, but not the problem I had. Um, the next thing we need to do is click on set zero. Now, we have to, and then instead of using a tape measure to measure the spacing between the motors, we're going to use the chain. So what we need to do is hook the first link from the left chain over the top tooth on the left motor. Then use the buttons to the right to extend the chain until it can reach the right motor. Be sure to keep an eye on the chains during this process to ensure that they do not become tangled around the sprocket. The motors are very powerful and the machine can damage itself this way. And then hook the third link on the right motor, um, motor's 12 o'clock tooth shown, as shown in the picture below. And then pull the chain tight by pressing pull chain tight and then press measure when the chain is tight. So let's do that. So we're going to take the left chain right here and clip it onto the top like that. See if you can see that. There we go. Now the next thing we need to do to do is to extend this until it reaches the right motor. So let's get to that. Okay, and to do that, what you're gonna want to do is put in a distance, it was set to 100, I set it to 500, and then press extend until you get it to reach the right side, so. I just want to quickly point out that I am not, um, uh, what I'm not too sure about is I'm guess, now that I'm looking at it, we're supposed to just take, re or release the chain from there and just let it hang down. Because as it is right now, I don't think it's gonna reach the right side. So I'm just gonna do that and try that and see if that works.
Okay, this is what it looks like now that it, it has extended to the third tooth from the, the 12 o'clock position. Uh, you're supposed to be, yeah, put it on the third one. The third tooth. And my distance, um, after everything, it was about uh, 3,050, I think, because that's, because I tried this a, cu a couple times, and I think that's what, that's what the distance is right now. So what you're supposed to do next, after it's all hooked up, is click pull chain tight and measure. So we're gonna do that. Now it's pulling the chain tight, so you can see. Oops, sorry. Now it's released it. So next, it's going to ask us which direction the chain is moving. Um, let's see. It is going chain off bottom, so click on that one. Then it's going to review the measurements, and then after all that, looks good. I'm going to click on looks good. And then the correct calibration procedure for your machine is being generated. Okay, now this, that's done. This is now we need to remove the chains from the machine so that we can put them back on in the, in the correct direction for your bottom feeding configuration. So, remove the chains from the sprocket and press next. So let's do that. So let's remove the chains from the sprocket. Okay. Then we've got to press next. Okay, now it wants us to move it back in the 12 o'clock position, so let's do that. Okay, now that that's done, we need to press next, or set zero. Now we need to uh, reattach the chains, so let's do that. Okay, one thing you want to make sure when you're reattaching the chains is that you want the end to be on the 12 o'clock tooth of the sprocket on both sides, as you can see here. Okay, the next thing we need to do is, is to adjust the left chain. So let's click on that. And now it's, now it's adjusting to the correct length, as you can see here. Okay, now that that's done, we need to click adjust right chain, and it should start adjusting the right chain. Here you go, and there we go. Make sure that don't stick, okay. Now it's gonna begin adjusting the right chain. Okay, now that they're both adjusted, we should be able to attach the router.
Okay, now that it's done, time for the next part, which we will click move to center. And now it should adjust itself. Looks like it's already done. Um, the next step is to, now that that's done, we need to press next. Next, we are going to define the home position for the Z-axis. If you have the automatic Z-axis installed, use the buttons to enable it and adjust the Z-axis until the router bit barely touches the surface of the wood. Then to press define zero. So let's do that. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is get your bit and attach it to the router. After that, you know, put the router back in. Okay, next we're gonna adjust the Z-axis until the bit just touches the wood. So let's do that. Now that we're done with that, we click the define zero. Okay. Next, we need a rough estimate for the distance between the points where the chains attach to the sled. The estimate will be refined by the calibration process in the next step. Okay, what we need to do is get a measurement between here and here. So, let me see, nine, nine and a quarter, so let's do that. Okay, now that I'm finished, uh, Putting in my measurement, click next. And then now to refine these measurements, we are going to cut a test shape. The test shape consists of two short horizontal pieces and two short vertical pieces. Based on these distances between these marks, we can dial in the machine settings. The size of the bit used is not crucial. Measure to any point on the mark as long as you are consistent. The process will repeat until both measurements are equal within five millimeters. The more accurate your measurements, the more accurate your machine will be. Press cut test pattern to begin. So let's do that. Cut test pattern. Let's see what happens. Okay, now we're gonna uh, cut the test pattern, so. Okay, now we're gonna measure between that mark, that mark, and then from this, that mark, to down here. And then we're gonna enter it in. So let's do that. Okay, after you enter your values, you're gonna click enter values. And Okay, now that we have our measurements, we are going to put them in.
After that, you uh, click Enter Values. And then it says, let's review the measurement to make sure everything looks good. You can use the back button to repeat any step. And looks good. And that's it for calibration. Um, the next thing we have to do is cut out the final um, sled. Don't forget to check out DIYHomesmiths.com. It will have all the links to our social media accounts. And we also do make house plans, full house plans, for $20. And um, that's, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to tune into the next video.